I have a phone in caller ending in 4722. Are you a committee member or just a public participant during this meeting? That needs to go away. Yeah. Oh, I need to read it. We have a quorum. Everybody ready? All right, I'd like to bring this meeting to order. It's October 28th, 2021, 6.01. This is the meeting of the Town of Loomis Land Use Subcommittee for Parks and Recreation. And we're gonna start by um, oh, letting you need to let you know that we are here in the depot. Um, we don't have any members of the public right now in attendance, but we do have a lot of our committee members um, via Zoom and a uh, public member also via Zoom. Um, if anybody that is listening wants to participate, um, that uh, Zoom link is on our agenda. Right now, we're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all. All right, can we have roll call please? Yes, Chairperson Jan Clark Kretz. Here. Bonnie London. Here. Matt Fox. Here. Russ Kelly. Here. Eden Lee. Here. I don't see Joanne Bridges. Uh, Catherine Sears. Uh, Jesse Lunsford. Here. And Rebecca Golding. Here. Excellent. Now um, for committee comment for items not on the agenda. Um, for those who weren't at the last meeting, we're going to have a new and improved town talks return next week over at the library. 
It's going to be 5.30 p.m. on Wednesday the 3rd, and the discussion is going to be housing design elements and, and standards. Thank you, Bonnie. Anybody else have anything they'd like to discuss not on the agenda? Any public members? All right. Um, with that, then, would, is there a motion to adopt tonight's agenda? Motion to adopt. I'll second. Hey, roll call, please. Stan Clark Ritz? Yes. Bonnie London? Yes. Matt Fox? Yes. Russ Kelly? Yes. Eden Lee? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, now we're going to open up the com public comment or committee comment for the consent agenda. Anybody have a comment on the consent agenda? Hearing and seeing none, um, would there be a motion to accept the consent agenda? I move to accept the consent agenda. Second. Okay, roll call, please. Yes, Jan Clark Pretz. Yes. Bonnie London. Yes. Matt Fox. Yes. Russ Kelly. Yes. Eden Lee. Yes. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you. We're gonna roll right over to Mary Beth and um, hopefully pick up where we left off last time. Yes, good evening uh, committee members and welcome to tonight's agenda. Um, at, we left off uh, the last time just a couple of weeks ago, uh, September 23rd to be exact. And we're just gonna pick up where we left off at that time. And that's the review of the goals, policies, implementation measures, beginning at implementation member uh, measure number PRO6-1.3.1.1. And I will now turn this over to Mark Teague, our uh, technical assistant consultant from PlaceWorks. He's not an assistant though. He's the man. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was loving it. That makes uh, Christy and Andy. Uh, the, and I'm just uh, holding the luggage. I love it. Okay, um, this is where we left off. Um, see, I I used this purple, and I didn't on the previous committee. Um, we got through it. And uh, so what we're talking about here are the implementation measures. Uh, we've already made decisions on the rest of uh, the document. Uh, to this point, we can go through that at some point uh, this evening. So this one here is, as these are all out of the current plan. As appropriate, the town will support and cooperate with volunteer groups and organizations that provide recreational activities for town residents. Uh, that's in your current plan. And from my perspective, it's, can you read that? I'm sorry, do I need to make it larger? A little yes. bigger, yes, please. Yes, please. Thank you. Oh, there you go. Is that better? Yeah. My, my apologies. Okay, <clears throat> and from, from staff's perspective, this is a perfectly fine implementation measure and there's no reason that we can see to recommend any changes. Okay, anybody disagree with that? Can, can we add maintain, construct, maintain, or, and operate? So say that again, sorry, Matt. Where would so you like that in, is So it inserted? says construct says construct and operate. I was just thinking construct can we add maintain in there? Maybe there's an opportunity there for the Oh, you're way up there. Okay. Are we there or are we and the next one down? I thought we had already re wordsmith that, but that oh. doesn't, yeah. doesn't mean that we can't yeah, that's make fine, that change. Um, where are you? Oh, here we go. Uh, construct. Sorry, I was just reading the top. It's kind of the same language that you're reading. <laughs> yep, there we go. So this would be the policy. And I, I mean, from my perspective, that, that makes sense too. Um, so, and then below would be the implementation measure. Mikhail, do you have your hand up? Go ahead, Miguel. Where'd he go? Mm -hmm. 
Miguel, you can unmute. Miguel? Oh, oh. Now can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, does this policy indicate that development by the town has to be on property owned by the town? No, that is not part of that policy. Um, this is just to continue the beneficial relationship with the school districts. So well, it says provide recreation facilities because the law states, although you may not follow the law, that um, the town has That's to- a little harsh, Miguel. I, I, I reject that as a statement, frankly. I do follow the law. Um, we may differ on interpretations, but I do not break the law. So what this policy gets at is the joint use agreements that the town has had in the past and the desire that's been expressed at this committee and other committees to kind of revive that effort to jointly operate facilities that benefit the town's residents. And when you say jointly operate, okay. Um, you know that, again, I understand that uh, state law requires the school districts to make facilities available for the general public. Anyway, okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So back to this policy here, 1.3.11. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody disagree with that? And if not, we'll just keep moving on. Fair enough. Um, this next policy is open space areas within proposed developments shall be designed as part of an integrated townwide network in conjunction with bicycles, safe routes to schools, pedestrian and equestrian trails. Again, this is in the current plan and staff didn't see any reason to make a recommended, recommended modification. Gene, go ahead. Unmute. Does network imply that they're contiguous or it doesn't have to be? If they're isolated things, they're still part of the network? In my interpretation, it's nice if they're all connected, but that's not how trails usually get constructed. Usually you get little bits here and there. Uh, but the idea is that it's part of an overarching plan perhaps to connect the plan and it may be 10, 15, 50 years before the town realizes it, but you got to start somewhere. Okay. But that's my interpretation. Uh, do we need to, Andy, Chris? I agree. I agree with you, Mark. Do we need to memorialize that somewhere so that there isn't a confusion mm -hmm. later? Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I, I, I think it's fine as it is, Mark. You know, as a planner, I would not interpret. I mean, you're absolutely right. When we're looking at integrated networks, sometimes it takes years and years for them to come together. So that's part of the planning process. So I, I, I don't think we need. Go ahead, Bonnie. Is one of the implementation measures to um, eventually develop a master plan, park and open space and trail? I think we have it down. I in. thought we had that in there, Mark. I think we do too. I think it's later. Can we, can we, can you just file that for remind us later if we don't come across it, Bonnie? And then I think it's later in this document. Go ahead, Jean. Um, <clears throat> the use of the term open space. I noticed when I read through all these things and other documents that the town has, open space seems to be used different places, different <coughs> ways. So I think I'd ask Mary, Mary Beth and Christy maybe to look at those things and get them consistent. Uh, consolidated and cons consistent. I'm just, yep. just this is one of the places that I, I don't know for sure if it, if it comports with all the other places, but we'll just look at, look at those all together sometime. Absolutely. This was prepared before we had, I think, 
had that discussion. So you're absolutely correct. Okay, anybody else have a comment? Or if not, we'll move on. Okay, so um, this here uh, is to expand path trails, pathways, and open space by incorporating them into plans that protect natural, riparian, aquatic areas, oak woodland, and drainages. Incorporate these natural features into project design and include the placement of trails, pathways, and open space. This would be another place where we'll have to make sure that's what we mean. Um, and the underlined and italic text is recommended by staff to clarify the intent of that. And this piece here, uh, include the natural features into the project design, I think is a statement for the community because often these things are sidelined rather than incorporated into design of, of development. They're pushed to the edge or they're ignored. And I think that they should be celebrated as they are already in some parts of town. Uh, anyway, that, I, I really like this uh, as it was drafted and we've just tweaked it a little bit or recommending tweaks a little bit. Any comment? All right, keep going. Okay, objective 2.1 is to connect the riparian and conservation areas, trails, uh, observation areas and recreation facilities with existing and planned regional facilities. And this speaks to the idea that, you know, we're not an island necessarily. There are trails in the area that we want to connect to and this simply provides uh, avenue to do that. Go ahead, Jean. Did we define green space or do we need to or not? I'm not there yet, Gene. We're still up on 2.1. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. sorry. <laughs> okay, never mind. I read ahead. Okay, if there's no discussion, um, comments will move on to the next one. Uh, this one reads, allow for the development and operation of smaller parks, such as tot lots, exercise pads, and open space. And, and um, this is another one, Gene, where we'll have to figure out what we mean there. I, I think we really mean active recreation space of some sort because of the other uh, push through there throughout the town and linked by trails, sidewalks, and open space. This is a acknowledgement that we may not be able to get three to five acre parks within the town. And we may be able to get small areas that we can recreate on, provide uh, an exercise loop or provide an area like a splash pad like we already have, or those types of things that are smaller, uh, but very impactful in a community. So that's, that's the impetus behind this. And that the idea is that they would be connected so that you don't have to drive to them, you can walk to them. Do you want to list that as active open space? Because Ooh, all those things are for active participation. Fair enough. So we had gotten into the definitions of active parks and passive parks and open space previously. I'm reluctant to reintroduce the concept of active open space here. So what if we just, uh, uh, what if we just what do if this? What if, Mark, you said something right before all this that I thought was kind of a solution. Uh-oh. Uh, lots, exercise pads, and other active recreation throughout the town. And other active recreation. Oh, I already have that. Like that. Okay. And it's a such as, so it's not limiting. Correct. Go ahead, Gene. Uh, not it's not limiting. So if it were, if it were the other kind, the passive open space, that that wouldn't be excluded then. Right. That's That's right. Anything. Because we might have the opportunity to have something like that too. 
you want me to put um I don't I don't know if you need to put it if it's not limited I just we might have that opportunity yeah the to me the focus of this policy has to do with smaller rather than larger uh, not that you couldn't have a small open space area but to me this was if we have you know four to five thousand square feet so big enough to put a swing set on something like that um, but certainly it could get much larger than that and it could be all linked if we don't have um, three things in a row, then we don't need the comma after tot lots. I think we were keeping exercise pads in, but Mark deleted it. Oh, okay. okay. Oh yeah, I, that's a mistake on my part. Do you know how difficult it is to type and edit with an English teacher on this? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we're blessed. Very much so. <laughs> Okay, are we good with this? No, we need to take the and out from before other recreation activities and then throw a comma and after recreation. I think we still need the word activities after active recreation activities or after at recreation. You wanna say activities or areas? dealer's choice maybe, maybe the blue phrase belongs after exercise pads with thought lots and exercise pads or examples and then you would add and other just to be picky you know that's why we're here let's just do this so exercise pads comma and other active recreation areas Like so? Success? Okay. Okay, so implementation measure 2.1, this one. Uh, Loomis shall work with Placer County or nonprofit businesses or others in the provision of public recreation facilities. I'm a little concerned about that word, but um, I think the town should always reserve the right to not participate. Sometimes it's not a good deal. And sometimes you want to be able to say no. So just putting it out there for the will of the committee. This is a recommended policies or so, implementation measure. So make it a may. Go ahead. Go ahead, Matt. Did you have a comment? I just said make it a may. Oh, you! I wish I could hear as fast as you talk. I don't know what is wrong Sorry. with me tonight. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> Miguel? Yeah. Um, and add an, S, add an S on a nonprofit, maybe. Nonprofits. Yeah, in that one, in provision of public recreation facilities within the town of Loomis. Or would we build facilities outside the town. So, so that's, I mean, an interesting topic. I mean, should should the town contribute to things that uh, Loomis Basin Park when I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's not technically in the town limits, but it's right, right across the freeway. And it's pretty much, it's pretty much the town's regional park. Right. Actually, we have, we contribute to the, to the restroom on the women's softball side, or baseball side. So we have done that. I'm not saying whether we should or shouldn't, but we have. I guess my concern is using park development fees outside the town of Lewis. I don't think they used the park fees for that. I think that was no, they didn't. General fund item. Right. So perhaps leaving it out for the I mean I don't I personally don't see a problem with I mean if, if it's I, I don't know if it's legal or illegal but I, I personally don't see a problem with you know using fees for something that's maybe not in the town limits but it's for all intents and purposes it's it's the town's park 
And benefits the town. Benefits the town, yeah. To address the legal question, it's legal for the town to use its funds to benefit its residents, even where that is outside of its jurisdiction. So I would probably say, you know, we don't have to put a shall there, but it's, it's something that if the situation arises that uh, the town should, should have the ability to consider. I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't restrict it. Well, I'm just thinking of the example with Costco, where if we don't have the authority to be able to make, um, you know, decisions, and we're going to be depending on other jurisdictions, it just, I don't know, it seems complicated. That's pretty much the system you have in place now. You're dependent upon other agencies to provide recreational facilities for the town. Right, it doesn't seem to be ideal. And so if we can actually keep that development funds within our border so that we can create more opportunities that we actually have full control of, I think that would be better. And Eden has his hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment. I, I view this as a, um, as, as a document that empowers us as a town to do certain things, to commit certain acts within the, within the town's rights as opposed to a document that limits our powers. Um, so I would err on the side of, you know, of, of empowerment, whether or not that's, uh, whether or not a, a certain transaction is legal or illegal, I think um, could be done on a case by case basis. But as a document, we should have the opportunity to see, um, to, to see what each transaction is, whether or not it's within the town, uh, uh, the town limits, or whether it's potentially something that is uh, that we can annex at, at a later date. I mean, here's a, here's a real world example. Let's say Placer County all of a sudden has financial issues and they stop maintaining Loomis Park and it just kind of, you know, falls apart. Um, you know, it'd be nice if the, the town had the, at least the ability. I mean, we don't have, don't have to do it, but you know, I, I wouldn't think we'd want to not allow it. If um, if it made sense for the for the beneficial use of the entire town, Andrew? I completely concur with that. Yeah, Anders, do you have an opinion? Um, I, I would concur that you know on a case by case basis, uh, if the town was to use funding outside of the town, they'd have to make findings uh, as to the benefit to the town. So, you know, I think the flexibility should be in here. Okay. And would anybody, if we wanted to just look and see what that might look like in terms of verbiage? Mark? I like it the way it's drafted, but okay, the committee wants to change it. And this gives you the most flexibility uh, available and we regularly team with others to provide services. So to me, this gives the town flexibility. And as uh, Andreas points out, we can we can deal with the legality of that on a case by case basis. Okay, Jean. Yeah, see a need to change it. I think that the, the May gives us the flexibility we need, and I like including the, the nonprofit bus businesses. I'm thinking sometime, for instance, if we had um, open space kind of passive park and when you look at uh, Trailer Ranch or the, the uh, equestrian area at, at the Loomis Basin Park, those have substantial maintenance from basically Loomis Basin Horsemen's Association. Well, we might have some park that we had some other group that might want to help with the maintenance of that. So I, I like keeping that, um, those phrases in there too. Okay, so as a committee, where are we at in terms of either adding or not adding? Eden, what 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 did you say you would prefer to have a little added verbiage? And I think Matt and you agreed on that. Is that right? I think it's fine as is. Okay. I think I, I think it's fine as is as well. Okay. All right, then I think that's <laughs> Russ, did you have a comment? Actually, I, you know, we have the kids in the town of Loomis or people in the town of Loomis play at the 
King Road Park and considering the fact that we only have one park in town that has a uh, enough space for a ball diamond or soccer fields or whatever, you know, contributing to the the uh, play fields that our people in town play on. We, we definitely need to be able to put that money there to help make them better because of the space. And the, uh, the county even at one time had offered uh, possibility of purchasing the King Road Park so they wouldn't have to pay the, at the time I was looking at about $80,000 in maintenance a year for that park. And it gets better every single year. So the fact that we contribute and, and possibly put money towards something to go on that park is, uh, is the best thing we can do as a, a town for our people. So anybody in disagreement with um, leaving it as it is? I like it as it is. Okay, so I guess we'll move on if there's no disagreement then. Okay, policy here talks about <clears throat> the town will encourage the compatible recreation use of riparian stream corridors. Um, I. I dislike the Michelle and then we're feasible. Um, that seems like a, a oxymoron there. Um, so from the perspective of providing flexibility, um, we're recommending that the town will encourage, although this is actually captured in other policies. So when it finally goes uh, to, the, uh, to the full commission, uh, we may end up consolidating just because uh, it, it may already be covered, but uh, in this case, it was already in the plan, so we left it uh, with the recommended changes. It's good to me. Comments? Any other comments? Looks like it's good. Good. Okay. Implementation measure. Um, I won't go into the numbers. Uh, designate linear trail corridors along repairing areas. This is what I'm talking about. It may be uh, Sierra College Boulevard, Interstate 80, and north of the Union Pacific Railroad as open space to maintain native landscaping and provide a visual buffer between uses and major transportation corridors. So, so how would that work in reality? Are, are you talking about we're going to Make a map that says here, and, and I don't know, maybe that already exists, but uh, there's a map that shows here's the designated trail corridor. That's the plan. Uh, part of this also speaks to the idea of ensuring that the major transportation corridors in and around the town have a setback so the development doesn't occur right up on the curb. And this is part of the uh, plan and the idea that would be at least in some of the setback areas, you may want to put a trail so that people have access to it. Jean, how do you how do you put a trail along Interstate eighty and and the railroad? Well, there's quite a bit of land along Interstate eighty back, behind Raleys that goes up in that area, and as that area develops, you may want to have some setback from the roadway. Um, the railroad already has impromptu trails on either side of it, um, and it is a regular course of action to put trails along those corridors. Um, it's, so an it's example of that would be in Davis, there's trail along the freeway there in, through town and also across the, the bypass between Sacramento and Davis. Right. Okay, so it could be like on the, on the Turtle Island side of things, there could be a, a trail Along the, along the freeway as well as behind Rayleigh. So it, it's not talking about, it's just when you develop those, you put a trail in. Exactly. I don't think the railroad would want us to have an actual trail on their right of way though. Probably not, or where I've done them in the past, what they want uh, for protection uh, and liability along there just makes it infeasible. But you could certainly put it along that corridor so it was adjacent to their right away. And can someone, I'm, I'm sorry, enlighten me. I'm trying to get a visual of what 
area you're actually talking about. Because I know that between Sierra College Boulevard and Horseshoe Bar, there's that open space area. And then there's other so, open space area behind Rayleigh's, but I don't right. see how they connect. Well, they're not gonna connect this way. They may connect to a larger network of trails. But predominantly, they would be along Sierra College Boulevard. Uh, they may be along the railroad here. They may also be along here. And as part of sort of a community design aesthetic, the uh, discussion that we've been having to this point is that the town would very much like to keep as much of its rural character as humanly possible. And one of the ways of doing that is to not allow development to go right up to the right of ways and to encourage an open space area uh, along there. And I believe there's land use policies recommending that. So mm -hmm. what this policy does is suggest that within those setback areas, you would have the opportunity to put a trail. I got it. Thank you. And then theoretically, that would be connected to more in the, in the community. And Mark, what's the history behind this implementation measure? Did, was it something you had? Yeah, it's just something staff is recommending. Okay. Uh, because it, it's a, it's a uh, companion implementation to the uh, setback for visual purposes along the major corridors. Any other comments? I, I have tried to look at the maps and I don't still understand. Does Loomis um, jurisdiction go all the way up on the Turtle Island side of things? Does it go all the way up to King or no. part of that is County? County. County? Okay. Right. Um, so we can't count on putting something through to King there ourselves. It, there's this little there's a little here. tongue, if you will, that comes in through here. Yeah. Okay. But in the policy that we just uh, discussed up here, implementation measure, we could come to an agreement with the county to connect the trail. So there is the there's the governmental will. There's a way. Is that county property or private property in the county? Private. Private. Doesn't necessarily mean it can't happen. Just means there's more people to get on the on the bus. I would take off the Interstate 80 trail. Right now, there's a proposal in there to put a subdivision. If you really mean what you're saying, then you would require probably 30 or 40 feet of back of their lots taken off. And that's, do you really mean that? Actually, aren't you talking about the Doc Barnes extension and the opportunity to put a trail uh, adjacent to Doc Barnes uh, between the freeway and the subdivision? So I, I think there's an opportunity in the future. Yeah, you'd have Doc Barnes and then okay. space but between Doc Barnes and the freeway, and then you could put a trail in that in that space. I, I don't disagree with that concept, but this policy says it's along Interstate 80. And that is along Interstate 80. It, it doesn't say it's a Caltrans right away. It just says along oh. those corridors. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, any other comments on this? And also, that doesn't mean that we can't work with the county to go on the south side of Interstate 80 to connect the uh, King Road Park in, in that area to uh, Horseshoe Bar and possibly across the Turtle Island property out to Laird Road or, or other places. So I like that idea to be able to do that with the county. Mark, do we have a policy or an implementation measure to develop a trail master plan for the town somewhere in this document? I, or Christy, do you remember if it's in the circulation element? Because this begs that we, we do need to have some form of a trail master plan. There is a trail master plan from 2010. Yeah. Okay, and we that's right, we do talk about updating it, okay. Right, and that'll be in volume two. So do you wanna change this instead of designate to update the trail master plan to include I think that would be useful, Mark. Mm -hmm. 
I have the master plan open right now and I can say that it, it does do that. <laughs> so I'm looking at trails, um, not so much along 80. That's probably the, the least of them. Um, there's just the one that would be along Dock Barns. But there are trails mm -hmm. called out for along um, the railroad and then also in various riparian areas. And we have an exact name for the trail master plan to make sure our reference is as accurate as it could be. Yeah, and when you say in volume two, can you just update the committee on what you mean by that? And Sure, volume two of the general plan will have various adopted um, documents that support the general plan. So it'll be things like the construction manual, the land development standards, um, the trails master plan, the bikeway master plan, um, documents of that nature. So they'll be available to reference in volume two. Okay. And Christy, that document is the 2010 trails master plan. Correct. Yeah. And another committee looked at that. Or has anybody looked at that? No, that, that was done in 2010, and uh, part of this general plan will be to go back and look at all of these standards, documents, and plans to make sure they're consistent with the general plan. So that has yet to happen. And it would have been adopted into the 2016 version of the circulation element. Okay. So it should be reflected there and then carried forward from that point. That's perfect. Thank you. Good with this? Yeah, it looks like it. Do we need north of the Union Pacific Railroad? Can you just take out north of and just, I, mean, I, I don't know if we need to limit it to the north side. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, it's a good point. All right. Uh, implementation measure allow linear linear preservation corridors along riparian areas, natural features, transportation routes, ensuring the town is not responsible for maintenance. I have no idea where that came from, but there it is. <laughs> is Would there somebody under help me understand what that means, especially the transportation routes? And, and I think this is a reiteration, Gene, of 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 this. And it, it, it's almost repetitive. It is. It's, it is repetitive. repetitive. It could go away. I, I think it should, Mark. Yeah. Next one is ensure that local trails are extended to connect to regional trails. I mean, to me, this is part of updating your trails master plan. So I would say ensure that includes awesome. What would we just say? You know, that seems, seems like a no-brainer, but. I mean, that's more straight, but you know what, I, Mark, I don't think it's a no-brainer because I, you know, I live in an area in Loomis where uh, a subdivision goes up and they're supposed to have a little horse trail. So they have this funky little horse trail that's like 20 feet long that doesn't connect to anything because right. they, you know, they abided by the requirement and, trail. Yeah. And, no, and nobody uses it. So, you know. Even though it's no brainer, I, I, I like your wording. Fair enough. I, I, I was, I was going to say, I know it seems like a no brainer, but I think it's important to state it. <laughs> Sometimes stating the obvious is essential. Andreas will probably back me on that. <laughs> Indeed. If, if the committee's okay with that, I'll move on to the next one. Go ahead. Uh, to preserve the rural character of Loomis, ensure active parks and passive open space areas are provided. 
And then that's the goal. Uh, and then the objective is uh, update park standards. On the passive open space, can we just make sure that we double check when we do our definition again there? Yeah, I was, I was going to suggest that, that maybe we don't call it passive and open space. Got it. I have no idea. Sometimes this stuff just gets in there. And then yeah. have we defined rural? Land use folks have done that. We just haven't gotten to it yet on the, no. the glossary, but there is okay. a definition. Okay. Yeah, because we're on L's. <laughs> yes. Mark, can you also take out the word areas on line 38? Because I think the term we're using is, <clears throat> excuse me, the term we're using is just open space. Okay. Uh, this one is update the park standards uh, to be consistent with the town's rural vision. Seems um, pretty straightforward. Does anybody have any grief with the wording there? Seeing none or hearing none. Uh, we're so close. Uh, town will establish design standards for community parks and other recreation and open space. Recreational and open space. I guess it would be all right. Spaces as standalone and or in conjunction with private development. So this would be your park development standards. Do we want to say that park standards? I, I think we need to. And do you want to say design or development? Okay. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Uh, if I can spell, there we go. And, and so then, do we do we want to say community park because that's a specific type of park? No, I think you're right. I think we can just do this because parks would be generic. Um, and do we want to say other recreational and open spaces? Um, why don't we just say parks and open space? I, I agree with that one, Mark and call it good. Now this would be an area where the committee should decide whether or not um, you want to limit yourself to building these in town. So if, the, if it's the will of the town that only park development be done in town, then this is where you would do that. I saw somebody's hand up. Did I see? No. Uh, Miguel has hand up briefly. I did. I thought I saw. Hi, something. I'm still. No, it's still here. Hello. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I wasn't at the last meeting. I was told that um, you stated the town limits doesn't have to follow the Quimby Act. So um, they have certain standards there as far as that the park has to serve. One, it has to be within the jurisdiction of the community. It has to be owned by the community and it has to serve the residents that provide the funds. So, uh, this one, uh, I'm not sure she says that. So, so one, once again, the Quimby Act is not the only tool, the only mechanism by which the town can, can provide park facilities. So I think so, that's what we what was said last at the last meeting to clarify that. So Mark, you were suggesting this might be a, a spot where we would put something in. What would be your suggestion? Well, my suggestion is to leave it the way it is, okay. um, but the, the committee and, and folks have been dancing around this issue of whether mandating that all new parks be built within the town. Um, and if, if that is the will of the committee, then this is where it would go. Uh, and I don't want to 
I don't want to get into the Quimby Act area because Quimby Act only deals with subdivisions and um, we want to be able to capture all of them. So chances are this would be under 66,000 of the government code um, and it would follow a different pathway. But let's not, let's not worry about the granular piece. The, the big issue here is, do you want to limit new parks to only being within the town? Um, and if the answer is yes, then we need to put a policy in here to that. If the answer is no, then we leave it the way it is and allow the town to figure it out when you have an opportunity to build a new park. Hey, Bonnie. Go ahead, Bonnie. Um, the conversation I recall was that we'd like to encourage that most of the park go where the people are and the trails in the outer areas will um, provide connectivity, but I don't think mandating is necessary. Eden? That's exactly what I, what I was going to say. Um, <clears throat> I think as a committee, we should leave it open, um, you know, as much empowerment as possible. If the town council and if the voters in the town wish to only allocate or only approve projects within town limits, that's, that's up to us. You know, that's, that's up to the voters. That's up to the town. But as a committee, I don't think we should be limiting it. Thank you. Rebecca? It's just, I, I do believe that the town boundaries are strange. And I say that for someone that has been a lifelong, you know, not a lifelong, a, min, a decades long resident of Loomis. I identify, I identify as a Loomis resident. I, I totally am Loomis oriented, but I'm well outside of the boundaries. And it just seems odd to me that you know, folks that live in what I consider to be Rockland are part of the Loomis boundaries and I'm not. And so I just think that the boundaries themselves are strange. And so what I wonder is that the, the community of Loomis and the boundaries of Loomis, as far as I'm concerned, don't coincide. I just wanted to say that. Thanks. Thank you, Rebecca. Russ? I agree with Eden that we should uh, not limit our uh, where we're going to put things or where we have the opportunity to put things. It's about our community people using facilities for uh, what they're built for or or where they're put. And uh, if we don't have enough space or we don't have enough options to be able to put things in town for them, I think we're very much shortchanging ourselves. Okay. Anybody else on the committee? So it sounds like majority or want to keep it the same. Okay. I just needed to bring it up, Chair, because it had been talked about several times and we yep. put that issue to rest. Fine. Okay. And this was um, this is where we talk about the park master plan, Andy. Uh, I think you and I added this. We did. At the end. Um, and so we've included some, some concepts here, trail design, including adjacent amenities and park types, including design and construction elements. Um, essentially, this was the, the catch-all to ensure that we actually have direction to develop a parks master plan consistent with the policies of the general plan. There is a park master plan. It just hasn't been adopted. Fair enough. I know consultants like more work. <laughs> Anybody in disagreement with this additional implementation measure? Well, one thing I'd like to, I don't know whether we want to add it or if and construction elements are covered that, but typically plans and specs that are very thorough get the job done the way you want it and the way you plan it. And the developer or no one else can change those except the town of Loomis. So I, I would only add something to see if it's necessary or an item C that the plans and specs will be specifically developed for, um, for construction and implementation purposes. Because as I look at some of the things that we might have done in the past, including things for the county when I spent 
20 years on the Parks Commission, parks that we got the way we wanted them were the ones that had very clear plans and specs, followed by inspection during construction. And, and those, those three elements make a park that is well-planned and well-built. I agree with you, Russ. What I'm wondering, though, is how you get to that level of detail without having a spot for the park. It seems to me the detailed plans and specs would, have, would follow after you had a location for the park. That's correct. It would. So do we want to say, I mean, we can certainly add in here that plans and specifications will be based on the park master plan. Or maybe um, there are requirements for um, the parks when they're ready to be proposed to have certain details. Yeah, actually, that's how you would review them. Uh, at that time, I definitely think you would review them and see what the expectations are and, and did we are, are we meet those. It allows us to have a chance to uh, maybe update things and add new things that we hadn't thought about before. So, um, you know, maybe this goes under B somewhere there, uh, subsection. How about, if, how about if we did that, Russ? So in the, in the engineering world, this is where planners live. And this is where engineers live. And, and Christy, we have the, what is it? The town, is it the construction manual, development manual, but... All, all this good construction information is in that document. And I think probably when it comes time, this would be the appropriate place to put it. I don't think we need to put it in the general plan, but we do have a, a manual that, that's already adopted by the town. Okay, then I would leave it the way we've just changed it. Yeah, so in, in my mind, Russ, just to be clear from a planner's perspective, this might be a plan view and a, uh, a section of how we want our trails done. And it might be a plan view and a section of how we want a restroom or a ball field. I mean, most of the stuff is off the shelf, but at least the town could talk about it and say, uh, when we get ready to build a park, if you're going to do a ball field, it must be like this. And that would be included at the back of the, of the design elements or as part of the discussion. So we could say, uh, the park would should have these following elements and move through it. I agree with you. That that's how I, over time, as developing projects, I created a list of don't ever let them do this to me again. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> Been there, done that. Okay. Um, if it pleases the chair, and if there's no other edits on this. Mark, I'll, before you go on, though, before we go on, um, we need to kind of go back up to the top and um, the area that we were talking about, five acres for um, every 1,000. Um, our meeting last time was not recorded and there's some confusion as to the direction um, and the voting on that. So I'd like to kind of go back to that <clears throat> and Fair make enough. sure that there's no confusion and, and now that we do have it on where we're recorded, I want to make sure that we have something in place for the public to see that, what our committee has decided. I'll go there in just a second. Given Miguel's comment and the penchant for the town to have prepared a number of plans and not adopted them, um, you want to change that to adopt? The town will yes, adopt. That them. sounds Mr. good. Sounds Agreed. That works for me. Agreed. Okay. <laughs> and Jean has her hand up. Uh oh. That means I did something wrong. Hang on. <laughs> Not on that item. I thought we were maybe finished. I read through the whole thing so far um, from the beginning, and I noticed we took out lands with park lands. In some places it works, and in some places it just ends with the word park and it is jarring and doesn't quite fit. So maybe you could look at that and see if we're not going to put park lands, maybe look and see if just making it parks with an S works to make it 
make it read better and not jarring because we don't just end a sentence with park when we're when it came from park land. So just kind of find and replace maybe or look at those places. Yes, do you mean we will have to do some of that when we put it all together and we do a proofread because we've got little dangling things everywhere. But thank you. I left a note at the top. Okay, down here, park standard, blah, blah, blah. We put it. Where is it? I must have missed it. Right there. Yeah, and I would like to see the, because um, we were, yeah, I want to make sure we can see that part. Because we, I know we, I don't know if we voted or not, I can't remember. Um, and then we also discovered at this time that there's a subdivision code that, oh, I see it's all over there on the side. Um, and so wanted to make sure everybody was sent that part of the subdivision regulations that's on the committee. I wanted to make sure everybody saw that. Um, and I just want to go back over and make sure that we're all in agreement on the five acres per thousand and that I believe what we had decided was to send a recommendation to, um, I'm not sure who, to go over the subdivision code to um, indicate the five acres of active park or open space. So there's two designations there. Jan, once the general plan is adopted, then the town has to go through all their codes and ordinances and ensure consistency. So that would be the step along with updating the zoning code. So that's when that would be done. Okay. And Bonnie, did you, does that answer your question? I know that you had some, we, we, I want to make sure that everybody is on the committee is, 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 is voting on what's on the general plan. We're, we're, we're not able to vote on what's in the subdivision code, but I just want to make sure that we go ahead and do that one more time. So I'm sorry, Anders, can you repeat that? I, I didn't catch it. Oh, all I said was once the general plan is adopted, then the town is required to go back to the zoning code, its other standards and modify them to be consistent with the general plan. So one of those is a subdivision code. And that would be modified then once the general plan is adopted. So does that mean that the five acres of the requirement of five acres of passive park open space remains or would be deleted? Well, based on the general plan in front of you right here, they would be deleted. And so it would only be five acres of, of park, of active park. So if we had the discussion with the committee about whether we want to keep or delete the five acres of open space in addition to five acres of open parks? We, we did not have that discussion. We just had something put into the side. So well, I, thought, I thought one of the questions I asked was, do you want five acres of parks or 10 acres of parks? And I thought the committee said five. So that was my recollection. Yes. No. I think we basically said 10 acres was going to be on is totally unrealistic yes and that's all true that's all true from what i remember we voted for the for the five acres of parks per 1000 but anders brought up that there is this subdivision code that is different than what we are voting in and so the question is do we as a committee then uh send along a recommendation that says a we want to have an additional five acres of open space or we do not recommend so that to be clear sense. on the the process of this if you do want an additional five acres it wouldn't be a recommendation the committee would have to decide to change this here to basically mirror what the subdivision code currently says okay So I, I think there's a little bit of confusion on what the decision was last time. So maybe it's worth spending a few more minutes to kind of revisit this issue and decide whether or not the committee wants only five acres of active parkland or wants to go with what the subdivision code currently says. So, is, there, is there a difference between what the town is trying to achieve and what is required of a developer when they have a project? 
or are those all the same? Well, uh, it's supposed to be all the same. So once this general plan is adopted, then the town has to go back and sure all of its ordinances, codes, and guidelines are consistent with the general plan. So at this moment in time, the developer is required to provide five and five. Uh, and until such time as this general plan is adopted, uh, that will be the case. So the reality is if a developer comes with a, a project, and I don't know how this would affect commercial development, but it, let's say it's a 200 unit apartment complex. Doesn't and apply. It's a subdivision code, so we'd have to divide the land. So they have to come to you with a 200 unit subdivision. Okay. Right. And then if they did that, you would, they'd have to basically provide one acre of open, one acre, or, or pave, pave the equivalent for one acre of active and one acre of open space, right? Um, no, what we would do is calculate the population and we would determine what fraction of a thousand that would be, and they would have to pay for five acres. So I think Matt was doing the math from a thousand people to 200 units. So a unit has more than one person okay. to it. But okay. yes, essentially that if, if they had a, a development that brings in 200 people, they would be required to provide an acre of each. There we go. And I've put the, the language from the code in the chat so you can see what it says exactly. So provide an acre of each or pay some mitigation fee equivalent, right? Correct. Because, because yeah, I mean, 200 people expecting a developer to, to, to put in two acres of parks for 200 people, this just seems totally out of realistic expectation. <laughs> and that's their whole property. Well, if it's two acres and half of that is open space, there may already be land within their development that isn't developable, but developable because of some natural feature that requires it to be open space. Right. So it's not totally outside of the realm of reasonable to expect that sort of a dedication. But again, that's that's the policy decision before the committee. Rebecca? So um, help me understand the repercussions of this wording so Bonnie, I, I clearly remember we decided that yes, five acres um, of active parks per the number of residents that, that we discussed was a stretch, but we were gonna ask for it anyway. Okay, so now I, I do remember that very clearly. Mm -hmm. So now we're saying we wanna ask for five acres of active park space and five acres of open space but to your point, is op open space seems to mean anything. I mean, it could be a dirt lot, it could be a, an easement, it could be concrete, it could be anything. So Rebecca, right? last, at the last meeting, we learned that the town actually requires both. I think up until that point, we thought that that was a recommendation from a open space master plan that hadn't been adopted. Okay. Um, at least that's how I was operating under. So that was kind of a surprise that this okay. was already in place. Um, I guess from my perspective, number one, I think the open space is actually a lot easier to achieve than the active parks. And so oh, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. And number two, when we are so far behind, it seems not wise to take tools out of our toolbox. Um, and again, these are aspirational. I think that you know, especially with where do we have more property? It's going to be on the periphery. Those are the areas that we're going to need trails. I don't see how the town's going to be able to come up with trails without having some open space land that hopefully we can achieve through development. So what you're saying is that if it's aspirational, it at least it will be more realistic if we are talking open space. I mean, I think in my mind, it gives us more opportunities to be able to achieve some of these goals that we have for the trails that connect right. to town. Right. Okay. Thank I you. I guess I need to understand what you mean by aspirational. If you establish these numbers in the general plan, they're requirements. They're not, they're not lofty ideals. This would have to apply to every new development that came in. So please, please understand that. And, and we've had them in place for how long? And how much have we achieved? That I, that I can't tell you. It says it was adopted in 1998. Yeah. 
Jean, does she have her hand up? Yeah, yes. Jean, go ahead. Yeah, we've had, we've had these in place. So I don't know exactly what date right after 1998, but we have had these in place. People have been paying both of these fees. Individual homeowners have built a house, have paid two different fees um, for you know what on two decades now. Um, so it's not a new thing. It's a thing that you would be removing. Now, at some point more recently, I don't know exactly what happened, but the council maybe maybe dumped the two count two uh, two things together, the two pots of money. I don't know exactly what happened there, but I know that there were two different fees, and they were based on different amounts because when we did the fee revisions, uh, they both got looked at. And it's based, it was each fee is based on the cost per acre. So the in town cost for the active parks was quite a bit higher than the cost per acre for the outlying open space kind of parks. But I know that there were two fees based on cost per acre in different parts of town. And those fees have been collected for probably 20 years. And I guess I feel like, you know, as one of the people that paid the money, um, I feel like if the town makes a decision that it's going to collect a fee for something, then it ought to either live up to that or it ought to give the money back because otherwise, well, that just doesn't seem fair to collect it and then just say, oh, well, we're not going to do it anymore. And when I look at I'm one of the lucky people that lives out in the country. So I have my own open space. But for the people in town, it would be nice when one of the things that Loomis really prides itself on and looks favorably on as part of being Loomis is the rural atmosphere. I think it would be really nice if the people in the town part, the in-town part, had an open space park or so that they could enjoy the outdoors and, and not, you know, someplace that they could enjoy that kind of natural setting as well. Now, you know, getting some trails along creeks is, is all well and good, but it's not really the same as having an open space kind of open area kind of part. I mean, I don't mean open like it's just nothing there, but you know, with trees and maybe a creek or not a creek, but uh, rocks to climb and trees to climb and kids to run around in just an open space. I think that's what was being looked at is that's part of, of the town too. And that the town people would like to have the benefit of, of an open space kind of area, not just the other ones in it. and the fact that we've been this is not a new thing you're taking away something not not adding something we've been collecting this for years and years so what would your suggestion jean be i think you ought to leave it the way it is in the muni code i think something else that might be worth considering is the fact that loomis doesn't have uh any kind of parks and recs facility, community facilities district or anything like that, that, you know, Granite Bay and pretty much everybody else has where they're collecting tax revenue basically on every parcel that would kind of offset, offset this fee. So we don't have that fee in Luma. So I, I think it's reasonable to, you know, expect a little bit extra upfront, you know, for, you know, when a develop, new development's coming in. So I would, I would agree, leave it in. Okay, Jesse? I'm with Gene 100%. Uh, why, why backtrack? We've already shorted ourselves in the past. Let's not short ourselves in the future. Thank you. And then Russ Kelly? I, uh, for, for a long time, the, the county collected money and then they built a park. As to my knowledge, in Granite Bay, they collect the money and then they build parks in Granite Bay. And wherever else, whatever else community the county collects money for, um, we seem to have built, us, built ourselves into a corner where we have no space to build these parks. We can't afford the space to build these parks. And 
we need to have uh, a little bit different way of providing recreation to our uh, our people, whether it's open space or whatever. And, and I think we just uh, it, it's we've we've built ourselves into a corner that we can't get out of. We can't get the five acres per thousand on either side. Um, that's uh, reasonable and, and affordable. And if you collect the money, you don't have enough money to actually do something. So it seems like uh, a contribution to uh, getting something put in place, whether it be uh, facilities or a park or whatever. I mean, it's, uh, um, it's, it's just a dead end road that we seem to be on with no way out. And so that's a frustration that I have. And I, if we could just put something in here that allowed for creative options that we could review to find ways to properly spend that money and provide um, open space or facilities or something like that. Um, you know, it, it's frustrating for people to live downtown and not have a place. Uh, like Jean said, um, she has her place and she likes it that way. And matter of fact, so do I. I have a place to walk my dogs. I don't have to leave the property. I can have my animals. I don't have to leave the property. We're providing for, we're asking for something for everybody in the town. And basically, we're not doing a great job of doing either one. So we, um, I don't know what the solution is. I wish I did, but I think that we need to find an alternative way to creatively do something for our folks with parks and rec uh, money, whether they be open space parks or, or just a uh, active park. And I, I don't think this requires the town to actually build five acres. I mean, this is basically, we're talking about a, a development fee, right? And, and then the, what the town actually does with the money, it, it, you know, we might not meet the standard, but we can go, okay, well, it doesn't make sense to build another park. It makes more sense to build a community center or something or upgrade an existing park or whatever. So that's why I was, that's why I was kind of looking at this. It's like two different things. There's what's the town striving to do? And then there's what's the development fee for the developers? I don't, I don't think it has to be the, the, the same. Well, uh, um, I'm not going to speak to the legal end of this, but Andreas, if we have a policy in here that we have five acres of active park and five acres of passive park, and we have an in lieu fee, it would seem to me that the in lieu fee has to be consistent with the policies and we would have to establish the rate accordingly. Am I missing something here? No, that sounds right. And another piece to consider here is that while we've been collecting fees in the past, I think one policy direction I've heard from this committee and from others is to prefer building over, over fees. Right. And perhaps there's a way to build that preference into this implementation measure. On the other hand, that can go into the municipal code as well. How would we be able to put something like that in there, Mark? That um, we, actually, we actually have a note here to make sure that the code reads that way. We could actually make it a policy, but it's, it's still going to be an emphasis. In lieu fees are really intended for the one-offs, the few parcels here and there where you couldn't have a dedication or wouldn't want a dedication because it's only an acre or so and they would end up losing most of the land and we don't want it. Um, in larger projects, would have to go ahead and build stuff and dedicate it. So we could set the mini code up that way. Um, it'd be a little granular for in here, uh, but I think we, I thought we had something in here. I think it would be appropriate to have a more general policy statement about preferring the dedication of land rather than the paying of fees. And then we leave it to the mini code to get uh -huh. into the specifics about what size of project we would be open to fees instead of dedication. Well, is that something that committee should consider? Do we want little teeny 5,000 square foot parks all over, spread all over the place? Or do we want to consolidate those into 
larger parks, but fewer of them, I, I guess. Well, I think what I think is, you know, we've all heard that the town wants parks and we've been collecting money and we haven't spent it. And I think we all are in agreement we would like to see parks um, in place of money. And I think that it's kind of a case by case, you know, basis. If you're talking about having a small one acre um, something happening and it, it, and then to uh, Russ's point, too bad there's not something that we can be creative about to um, help both things happen. So, you know, I, I don't think any of us want 5,000 little parks. I think we want more parks and open space. Um, and we want that versus money. Um, and then we want that to happen. <laughs> so, Because no, the that... two developments we have right now, the, the one off of Taylor, aren't they, they have a little teeny park that they're adding. And then the one off of uh, Humphrey, right? They're building a little teeny park too. So that... And those are relatively small developments. And so if we have a master plan, I mean, then it's all spelled out. Is that right? Yes, that's where it would go. Uh, and then be, you know, you'll have more granular discussions about how and what. And it may result that after you have more in-depth discussion on the master plan, you go back and then modify this and decide you want to do something slightly different. So none of this is, you know, set in concrete. Okay. Jesse? I'm just going to say, I'd love to see a five acre park in the Turtle Island facility. And I'd love to see five, as we saw with BEM, even though they pulled their project, that was 88 acres. I would love to see a five acre park in that area too. So I think the land is available if we could put a policy together to say, great, these are where we'd like our parks. I'm in the downtown area. I understand there's no land in the downtown area. But I would still like five, you know, at least two large parks before we stop building or we build out max. And I think Turtle Island is a great location for a five acre park. And I think along Sierra College is a great area for a five acre park and open space. Thanks. Russ. <laughs> the uh, Loomis Sunrise Park, classic example. It's a great little park. It uh, has ball fields and things like that on it. But when we put that park in there, I happened to be on the Pasco County Parks Commission at the time. All those folks that live in there wanted nothing to do with anybody else coming in and using their park. And so when you put it in the middle of a subdivision, sometimes they're uh, territorial about it. And that's uh, kind of what happened with that part. It's, uh, it's hard to use. It's, uh, I mean, it's one of the only places around to use other than schools. And so um, it, it's, it, it's kind of frustrating, but there could be opportunities in, in, of actually using land, for example, south of the freeway between King Road and Horseshoe Bar. There's a lot of property over there. And some of that goes on sale at different times. Uh, somebody wants to get rid of it, but, and that requires a land use thing with uh, uh, Placer County and in, included it into the town and that sort of thing. But it's, uh, and maybe it's a place where we just buy and put the park in because there's no homes really close to it or very few. So there just needs to be some options so we can actually get something done that's uh, that's best for the community and i wish i had a solution but i don't okay so mark it looks like you changed it up there that's correct i, I wanted the community to be able to see what it would look like um so if that's the decision then it can stay and has anybody else got their hands up Yeah. How do joint use agreements fit into this? For I mean, if, if you look at the schools and and Loomis Park, you had all that up. It's we got that's forty acres. You know, if, if the town's contributing money to those, does that count towards? I mean, couldn't can you justify saying okay that we're gonna take some of that money and use it for joint use agreements in an existing school facility and and. 
to be brutally really honest, that's how you got where you are now and you have no parkland. Yeah. Somebody looked at all of the land that was owned by other people and glommed onto it and you have no parks. So if that's a decision of the town, I think that's fine, but that's how we ended up where we are today. Yeah. And I, I don't necessarily think, think it's a bad thing. I mean, Loomis Grammar School's very central location. H. Mm -hmm. Clark's a great location. Um, I think they're wonderful. And, and we went through and, and uh, showed how you know, the, the schools and the town have collaborated. And, and I'm guessing and hoping they will continue to do so. Um, but that entered into the discussion here uh, of why we only have a few acres of park for 6,000 people. Yeah. Because those facilities, while they're available to children during certain times, are not available to adults pretty much at all. Right. Dean? Oh, I just wanted, wanted to say that that's, those school facilities are not ongoing costs. Basically, they ask us for money when they want to put a new playground in or, or redo something like that. So we don't, as far as I know, we don't keep contributing. It's a one-time contribution to, uh, to, to put in something new or like to redo the tennis court or we put a chunk of money into the um, the swimming pool at Del Oro, but we're not um, spending park money on an ongoing basis. Actually, that's one of the problems. We don't have money for ongoing um, park maintenance anyway. Um, I'm trying. I think Jean, am I unmuted? Jean, you you broke up a little bit. Can you just look okay. your last sentence? Okay, I. I there was the, the point about we're not paying ongoing things toward yeah. the schools. And then my other point was, I, I agree when it's, um, I agree on having that we want build the park, uh, get the land rather than just pay a fee for the most part. Uh, but when it comes to an open space park, unless we end up with some other subdivisions out in the rural areas that that would be uh, useful for that. And Jesse mentioned a couple of places. Um, the other thing is to, to collect the fees from places that uh, subdivisions that that isn't feasible and use it to buy some property when it comes on the market and would make a good, a good park facility. And, um, you know, places do come on the market or you could buy it and if it's a splittable parcel you keep part of it and sell the rest and uh, try to recoup your costs but I think that's that's a place where you can use fees to do the job if it isn't part of uh, what what that particular subdivision can handle as far as having any real open space uh, but especially the active parks, we wanna get as much as we can in, in that subdivision and not have to, or I agree with that completely. I have a question. If we were to buy land um, and then we turned it into a park, would we have to come up with the houses that were lost on that or how, do, how would that work? If you buy land that's designated for housing under the no net loss, you would have to find a place to replace those houses. If we redesignate the land use to reflect the park use. Correct. I guess you could. So say that again, Andreas. Charge. So, how, so if how we, would that... I, I think for that to be triggered, we would need to redesignate the land use. And I'm not sure, but not all jurisdictions always do that when they purchase property themselves and we'd have to go back and take a look at how Loomis has handled that in the past. Yeah, because um, that would be unfortunate, I think. Except if you're if you're talking about um, a 4.6 acre zoning, you're not going to lose very many houses. No. Yeah. So I, I guess my point is that that's a, a, a pretty specific detail that's sort of abstract right now Got so it. we'd have to take a look at that when we get okay. to it somebody else had their hand up miguel yes a couple points i'd like to make this is called a park dedication fee 
What it is is to provide additional park land for the town of Loomis. When a school comes in, they're main, mandated by state law to have so many acres, basically five for an elementary school. The idea with the park dedication fee is that you get more land. You don't contribute to the existing school site. So you need to keep that into mind. Secondly, about these fees, five acres of open space and the five acres of park dedication, what's that mean? It means a significant cost to a homeowner or to a home buyer. Those costs are pa passed on. So you're talking about between the open space and the park dedication fee, probably five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 per lot. Thirdly, there are two fees currently collected. There's a park acquisition fee. This is money supposedly to buy park land. There's a park construction fee. This is money that is supposed to be used to build the park. So each homeowner when, or each, when you pull a building permit, you pay those two fees. Also, you pay a third fee, a passive park fee. So there's three fees in the, I don't know, 40 years that I've lived here, we've developed 1.1 acres of parks. Now, Gene was on the planning commission. And I don't know if you were there when they did Hunter Oaks, but there's subdivisions that have come in that weren't required to put build parks. What a developer will do will give you in lieu fees. They'll say, here, here's the money. We don't want to build a park, we'll just give you the money. Now the town council or the planning commission had the authority to require them to build a park, but we never built any parks. So uh, it's great to say we want five acres and we're gonna charge the people for open space and parks. But unless the town council or the, or actually in this case, the planning commission requires that, it doesn't happen. Now, we do have two new subdivisions as mentioned that each have one small park. So what's the answer to this? Before you say you're gonna have five acres of open space and five acres of parks, maybe you should see what that really costs. Now, there are some cost figures in the park and recreation plan or no actually roger updates these costs every couple of years we hire a consultant they come in and see what land costs and what park building costs are so before you say you want a lot of land you should see really what's that going to cost and secondly is that money being used to develop these or is it just sitting in the park um in the town budget town financial budgets thank you And no, Miguel, I wasn't, I was, I was not on the planning commission and I think there should have been some tot lot or something for those subdivisions. Yep, somebody else with their hand up. Jesse? It feels like we've kind of gotten in the weeds right now. Um, What's that? It feels like we've gotten into the weeds right now. Um, <laughs> I think that the question is, is actually come to, do we want the five acres of park and we want the five acres of open space? And to, to me, it, it's straightforward. We've shortchanged ourselves in the past and we don't have the, the amount of acreage that we require. And, you know, it, it, I, I think it can fit somewhere. It can work somewhere. And I don't want to see us go backward and, and decrease the amount of land. If the planning commission or the town council decides to take in loo feeds, that's the issue with them. Those are elected officials. But for us as a town, I'd like to see it stay five and five. And where it goes after this, that'll be decided between the planning commission and town council. Thank you much. Okay. Any other discussion? Is it possible to get the committee to vote on this? Policy that Mark wrote, policy or um, yeah, policy one one one. I mean, just one last quick question. I mean, does this lock the town into like if we get say we got a hundred thousand dollars, do we have to build land, to buy land for a park versus spending the money at one of the schools? I mean, I think that's what Russ was getting at earlier was we should have the flexibility to go. Okay, what's the best bang for this dollar? You know. What's the point of buying a bunch of land if we can't afford to, to, to build anything on it or maintain it?
So with the language of we'll seek to achieve, we've got a lot of flexibility for the council and the planning commission to come up with much more specific direction through the subdivision code. And so I don't think this locks us into using it just for building that. If there's, if there's money collected, we would have to put it towards this purpose. But if there's, let's say if there's an adjacent school site that is being used by that development, I think a colorable argument could be made to using that money on improving that, that space to benefit those residents where that payment came from. Okay. If that's the case, then I would say leave it as is. And, and we, I mean, I mean and, uh, does anybody know how much money we've, I mean, are we sitting on a pot of gold here that's, that we just haven't been able to spend or is, <laughs> I kind of doubt it. So, I mean, we, we've, we've had this, this policy in place for 20 some years now and how much money is in there? Is there somebody that can, Carol, is Carol there? To look up. Yeah, I'm here, I'm right here, what do you need? Uh, how much money is in our parks fund? I have no idea. I can email Roger and get that information, but I won't have it tonight. Okay. It's pretty safe, but it's not $5 million, which is what it would probably cost to build no. a small park. <laughs> I can do that. I mean, I can do that and get back and we can report back. I think Bonnie's looking it up too. So it's got to be, it's in the budget that we put in every yeah, month. So that's what I can't do. Tidy yeah. Here. Bonnie's doing it. Oh, I, mean, okay. I, I think without some sort of citywide community facilities district where we're collecting assessments on every parcel and businesses every year that that's how you fund new parks. I mean, this, this, these little fees we're collecting, Reality is, it's we're not going to build a new park with, with that money. I don't think. So, so that's kind of getting into the weeds a bit. So the question is, do you want to leave that policy as is, or do you want to change it? Because if you want to leave it as is, it would be helpful to have the committee take a vote on that. I, I, I think we can leave it as is, so long as it sounds like we've got the flexibility to. So that that defines what we collect from the developers, and then we've got flexibility on our end as the town on how we spend it. We don't necessarily have to go out and save up all that money until we've got enough to build a park. We can we can look for the you know what makes the most sense. So is that a motion? So first off, before we start the motion, exactly what policy number are we talking about here, um, Anders? 111 on line five. Line five, okay. I just want to make sure because we've been talking about so much stuff. Uh, exactly, so line five. So. Line now five, we're... policy 111. I want to remind the committee that this is in a, a different vote than what we did before. And is there a motion to for the above written policy? So, I mean, it sounds like we're in agreement. So I guess I'll motion that we keep it as five acres of active and five acres of, of passive kind of to match what we've basically no change. Uh, that would be the no change, right? Right. Kind of, yeah. Is to leave it as is. I'll second that. Okay, let's have a, a roll call vote. Yes, uh, Jan Clark Kretz. Yes. Bonnie London. Yes. Matt Fox. Yes. Russ Kelly. I only have one question. We're leaving this part the way it is, and we're modifying everything else we modified, and that's what we're approving right now. Is that correct? This Bring vote this. is only on policy one. One, one. You have not taken a vote on all the goals, policies, objectives, implementation measures. Strictly that one, one, one line number, line number five. And the motion is that the dot or is to keep it as it is written right now up on the screen. That is correct. Okay, I'm for it. Okay. Uh, Eden Lee. Yes. Okay, that's everyone. Thanks. All right, Mark. Just to clarify, when he said what's written on the screen, he's talking about what's written over on the right, right? <laughs> so the town will seek to achieve five acres of active park and five acres of okay, you change park that. open space for each 1,000 residents. Got it. Okay. And this is for reference. It's not part of the committee's purview. Got it. I didn't, I didn't see that he changed it. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thank All right, you. Mark. I guess you're going to scroll through all of the goals, policies, and objectives, see if there's any changes, and hopefully we can get the committee to vote on these. 
there we go. So those all got changed. So here we go. Um, to ensure adequate parks, um, rural vision. <coughs> here, um, I don't need to read all these to you. Um, we've already voted on this one. Um, this was a discussion that we had about ensuring that the town uh, had access to things. And this is, I think, speaking to Matt's thought that we should be able to use other, other property. This was the modification of the municipal code that will now be done to reflect whatever goes on. There were some provisions here that we discussed to talk about uh, Provisions of my law and to count additional park open space toward action for the code to calculate allow development in order to encourage. Oh, this was allowing that if they exceeded their park standards, that they might be able to move development elsewhere on their site, uh, clustering, if you will. And this provision here was to allow more protection of areas that the town wants without a potential loss of uh, development potential. And please understand this is may consider, these are just bullet points for the town to consider. Nothing in here locks you into doing any of these things in terms of in the ordinance, if the town decides not to, but they're things that were, that are often used by communities to get more of what they want without having to spend more money to do that. And so that's why we do that. One of the things that we talked about uh, is that standards may, the new standards for parks may allow some private amenities um, in new multiple family, many communities are doing this because they don't want to own or maintain their parks, um, or, or they want to make sure that apartments and whatnot have adequate open space. So that's where that is. This is a slippery slope. I would caution you on that one, but it is a good idea to at least have the discussion. And I don't know why that is crossed out. That was not supposed to be crossed out. Um, neither of those are. Oh, I think it's just a, that's why that went like that. Interesting. Okay. I love it when it has a mind of its own. So Mark, um, there we we are, go. So you want us to have a discussion now on this, these items. Right. So before I scroll through the page, um, and the, the committee had already voted on all of this stuff, but yeah, since so it wasn't yeah, recorded, I guess we need to do it again, right? Yeah, we just, um, we've not, I, I don't know whether or not we voted or not on everything, but since we have, I think, finished all of the verbiage, um, but you just went through something and you said that we need to discuss something. So I wanted to. Oh, what I, what I meant down here is under this implementation measure, it talks about updating the code to match what the element says. And I was saying that this one here on C is something that this town should discuss at the time of the ordinance but it may not be something that you actually do. So that's just, that's just cautionary tale, if you will. But uh, these are all under the implementation measure and it says the town may consider. So it doesn't lock you into doing anything. It's simply a laundry list of things that you might wanna look at when you do your new code. Okay. And I just saw a chat come up from Andreas. And thank you for Bonnie and Mary Beth and everybody that was looking this up. So Andreas posted in the, in the chat that this year's budget document reflects that the parks fund funds total $927,621 breaks down into 433,000 for park acquisition and 247 for park improvements and 247 for open space passive parks. So Matt Great, that, that's helpful. Great. Okay, go ahead, Mark. Um, okay, and then uh, let's see, moving along here. How, how do you want to do this, Chair? Do you want to vote on these individually? Do you want to just sort of scroll through them and see if anybody cares and then vote at the end? I'm at your well, pleasure. Just remind the com committee that we've we have gone through all this um, together and just 
we will be probably needing to get another vote. So to to get okay. all under one motion. Um, but if anybody has any questions or wanted to revisit anything, um, now would be the time to do it. Got it. So, so Jan, that would be like we just did on that last one where we had a vote that said um, that we, the committee, um, make a motion to accept the goals, policies, and implementation measures as amended by this committee, correct? Correct. Is that what you're kind of looking for at the end of this? Yes. Okay, thanks. Okay, so down here we had a comment last time that we wanted to reword this implementation measure to match with the downtown committee, which ironically met just before this meeting. Um, but you know, and this is what they have for the downtown area for open space and, and for recreation pieces. Um, and it may be, anyway, I added, the, I added those because we literally just finished that. So it's there and it includes the Civic Center in the vicinity of the town library, uh, creation of a museum uh, to honor Lumis Basin, and then support the Blue Goose and Anchor Park as centers for community activity. So this was this was something the committee asked me to do, and this is the result of that ask. Okay. When so when the when the uh, general plan is consolidated, we will not have duplicate policies such as that. So just be aware that it's kind of there to make you aware of what's in the general plan. But this will be cleaned up to get rid of duplicates. Right. Okay, and then here we have uh, extending our recreation resident uh, through, through use of trails. And this kind of speaks to the issue that I think Russ brought up previously, which is we need to be creative in how we meet our open space and recreation needs. And this, this objective and uh, following policies will allow you to do that. And here we've already went through these earlier today. So unless there's any changes there, I won't bother reviewing. And there we have it. So a motion would be in order to uh, recommend these be forwarded uh, to the land use committee. And I think you have that language already, Carol. Repeat that what you said. Isn't that are we going with what I said that we're we are um a motion to accept the goals, objectives, policies, and implement implementation measures as amended by this committee. Correct. Okay. I so move. Who was that? Bonnie. Bonnie. I second. Okay, can we have a roll call, please? Uh, yes, just a second here. Um, if I could just interject, because this would be the uh, the last matter that we're dealing with, or do we have additional um, matters for committee review? The only thing that we had left in the PowerPoint, Mary Beth, was to see if the committee wanted to recommend a location for future parks. Um, we have a, a slide for that on the PowerPoint. Okay. Okay, so okay. then we'll do this motion close out what Mark's doing, and then we'll do our, our, um, the end, the end. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. We have a motion and a second roll call. Okay. Jan Clark Kretz. Aye. Bonnie London. Yes. Matt Fox. Yes. Russ Kelly. Yes. Eden Lee. Yes. All right. Awesome, great work, everyone. All right, so that goes away. That's where I copy that. Go on, go away. Um, okay, oops. All right. One of the things that we can do, we do not have to do this, right? So the, the committee is not in a position of, of having to locate parks. And in fact, there's a pretty good reason not to just say, well, this parcel here uh, is a park. However, However, uh, it's always good to ask a committee such as this if there's an area specifically where you would like to see uh, a new neighborhood park or a new park of any type uh, to go in. And so we always like to ask. Uh, 
um, because sometimes people have great ideas about where parks should go. So before we close this august body, um, we have a slide here to talk about where you might want a new park. Hey, Bonnie. Uh, definitely by the library where we already have the land. Just need construction. I would agree. That's a perfect spot. Fortunately, that's already a policy. And there's any other place you would like to have a park? <laughs> <laughs> um, possibly a, a active park over at Heritage Park, um, if that's developed. So for those of you following at home, isn't Heritage Park the piece of land that the town owns sort of in this area here? Yeah, yes. on the, that's correct. Yeah. Pretty much right where my cursor is, I think. Yep. Um, okay. And I think Jesse had two recommendations on one of his, um, when he was speaking tonight, Jesse. Yeah, I, I think over by Turtle Island, the, the acreage is there, a five acre park would work perfectly. Um, also, as we saw with uh, BEM, over in that neck of the woods, they were putting together 88 acres, a five acre park, I think would go great over there. Um, the, the, the industrial park they were talking about was, uh, you know, eight to five Monday through Friday. And for most parks, you're looking for parking, you know, after hours and on um, weekends for the kids. Mm -hmm. So to me, it, 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 it spaces out the parks. And I think it takes consideration of future growth that'll go around those parks. Thank you. And Miguel has his hand up. Well, it should be one there behind Rayleigh's. And if it's a thousand people, it should be a five acre park. Not Where? A Miguel, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? I was having a trouble hearing you. Oh, I'm can sorry. You... Can you hear me better now? Yes. Whatever, Where? whatever the new subdivision behind Rayleigh's is called. Oh, there should oh. be one there. As far as indicating other areas, uh, it's better just to designate draw a circle and say within this area mm -hmm. and i i don't know now that you got rid of the quimbiac i don't know if you're saying money collected in a certain area needs to be spent in that area but it's better to draw a couple circles in town and say okay these are areas where parks could go and wait until development comes you, if you pick a site now uh you don't know if any development's going to come in there as far as turtle island if that really is in dust i'm um, sorry tourist destination and a few houses, uh, there, there's no need for that big a park or a park over there. There's nobody gonna there to use it. That's the, also the, the thing with the park at the end of Walnut. That's the worst location for a park. The freeway is on one side of it. There's only a couple houses around it. And that land is worth a million and a half dollars. You could take that money and buy a good park site. You could have bought the park site at the corner of Rockland Road and Barton from the nuns. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Miguel is spot on. We don't try to actually, unless the town had a specific piece of land that they owned or whatever wanted to, to locate it, we would, we would fuzz it out a little bit and say, in this area, um, the town would like at some point to have a park. I'd like to see trails in Turtle Island that connect with the um, uh, county park. Jean has her hand raised. Go ahead, Jean. There we go. I would like, obviously, to see us, the town, watching for a property and in, in, to put a, a, a passive type of open space park, not indicating any area in particular, but someplace like along Barton Road or Sierra College, just to watch for property that might come on the market or that uh, somebody might be amenable to splitting off something, just, just to keep an eye out for that. So Placer Land Trust, they are interested in trying to identify um, a Japanese-American farm that might have been um, 
you know, in production in the 1900s, um, similar to Wakamatsu Colony, which is out in Placerville, but way out in the boonies. Um, I think that they're really interested in trying to find an area that uh, they can use for, you know, cultural historical significance as an educational place, but also land conservation. What about perhaps looking at the unbuildable parcels in town? Um, if they're unbuildable, their value is pretty low and the town could possibly buy them and do something creative on a small scale. Mm -hmm. Those would all be the crumbs that you would pick up as part of your park master plan because uh, yeah. you want to be able to get to them and, you know, and, and, and that sort of thing. But no, that's, that's a great point, Mary Beth. Uh, little little agencies like Loomis need to be creative in how they provide amenities, and that would be one way of doing it. Okay, I think we've got quite a few notes, Chair. We just wanted to ask this question of the committee, um, because all the other committees got asked where we would put high-density housing. Uh, and <laughs> the, this committee got off and just where you'd like to put parks. Although I will tell you that some of the nastiest fights I've ever been in in a public meeting were over parks. Um, people that didn't want them and people that wanted them. It was uh, pretty interesting. So I'm with Russ. The, the, the further out you can identify and establish a park will be, the easier it is to get them developed. What, what about the parcels along the railroad track? On the, I guess the north side of... I mean, weren't, weren't those identified as a possible right-of-way for an, an extension, street extension at some point? Now that's pretty much dead and they're just kind of sitting there. I mean the old um, office professional, which which uh, parcel? So kind of a you know across the railroad track from Blue Goose, kind of along there, and and Blue Anchor, and so right in here. Yeah, all that land there. What's all that for? I think it's all private land. Isn't right that the uh, Granite Drive extension out of Rockland that comes up through there? Oh, yeah, there, no. there was talk, I think, at one point of extending. Extending a uh, uh, sweatser through there, right? So yeah. sweatser right here, and oh. and but I imagine that land's pretty cheap. <laughs> Nobody's going to want to build a house right next to the railroad track. <laughs> Just something to throw out there. Yeah, I think it's on it's, the table. It's uh, lo located downtown where we where we want people gathering and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, access is the only thing that's been a head scratcher for everybody on this one because of the railroad tracks. Yeah. Uh, now, you and me, well, me, uh, I would likely walk across the railroad track, but the railroad takes a dim view of that. Um, and, you know, they would want that fenced, which would then basically bifurcate. But not that it's beyond the, the pale. Uh, the, the committee still has yet to decide on what to do with this triangle. Um, which is the former business park or the current business park designation. Um, and so no, who knows, there may be an opportunity to do something cool uh, in there. Jean? Um, that, am I unmuted? <laughs> That's yeah. railroad, yeah. railroad right away along there. And there's also, I think Miguel pointed out, there's a high pressure gas line along, along the tracks there too. And so, yeah, people do use that dirt bikes, especially, but it's not, there's not a practicality for a Switzer extension. And I don't think the railroad really wants us to put a park in its right of way either, or <laughs> over that uh, high pressure line. But linear facilities are, are done in a lot of communities. And, you know, if there was enough demand and we could make it work, that wouldn't be bad. Um, <laughs> But, oh. so, so I just pulled out the parcel map and that it looks like that is the whole thing is owned by the railroad. Yep. Yep. I think so, that they're planning to do a third rail. Are they really? No. Okay. Well, that pretty much nixes, nixes that. Okay. Yeah. I was just going to comment. So my experience working with both SMUD and with PG&E before, high pressure gas lines a perfect place to put a grassy field because you can't plant anything, you can't build anything. 
the utility companies would love it if we just if we planted grass and 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 graded it to to a nice flat field for them. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sounds like I've a done, walking trail. Yeah, I was gonna say I've done trails under power lines and over gas lines as well. Um, and lineal features along rails are are certainly common. Um, but anyhow, I got what I needed from the committee. Unless you have more ideas. Can anybody hear me? Yes. Yes. There's a great park site. If you go back to that map, oh, it's adjacent you. to uh, the Walnut Trailer Park, right? Right in here, there's a big open area. These streets butt into it, but there's all this open area there. Um, Help me out. Go, go to your left. Go to your left. Uh -huh. Whoa, no, right there. All of that. All this? Yeah. I think there's one house maybe on it. Yeah, that's that's See, a and these streets butt into it. The the streets below it go into it. So you have plenty of access. And there's a lot of houses around there. And there's you know, so it'd be a great place for a one, two, three acre park. Yeah, that's a pretty cool spot. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Miguel. You. It's good good idea. Back to the football game. <laughs> doesn't that property all, all belong to uh, the main drug family isn't their fa that their family home there and they own the whole whole piece around there belongs to irene okusako where that okusako oh okay <laughs> different family then that is quite the home uh, just looking at it from space okay thank you chair okay is that your last slide then? I believe it is our last slide. Yeah. That's it. All right. <laughs> now, I know we've done a motion um, to do the implementation measures and policies and goals. Um, do we need to do anything else to wrap up? Yeah, we need to do a motion to forward this committee's recommendation of the goals, objectives, policies, and implementations too. We don't have an umbrella. This is this is its own standalone committee, correct? No, it's part of land, land use. It is. Okay. I think it's part of land use. It's land use. Okay. So we have to we have to recommend that we forward our recommendations to the umbrella land use committee for their consideration and incorporation into the land use element of the general plan as discussed at this meeting. The committee recognizes that this completes our task at this time, and we have an opportunity to participate in the review by the Umbrella Land Use Committee, the Planning Commission, and the Town Council of the draft 2020-2040 general plan update. I so move. Second. Roll call, please. Okay, let me find that sheet. Jan Clark Kretz. Yes. Bonnie London? Yes. Matt Fox? Yes. Russ Kelly? Yes. Eden Lee? Yes. Thank you, folks. Ooh, good job, Thank Parks you. and Rec. <laughs> good job. You guys, this has been a really amazing uh, group, and we accomplished a lot and uh, done some really strong, hard work for the town that we love. So thank you, all the committee members. Um, just your every single second has been so valued here and all of our um, wonderful staff and experts. Thank you so much. Um, just imagining our town with more parks and open space is um, is really wonderful thought. So thanks. Thanks to everybody. Good job. And thank you for your leadership. It's been it was great. Yep. Oh, thank awesome. you. <laughs> Woohoo. Good job. Everybody. <laughs> Good night. This is adjourn. Adjourn. Good night. And I'd like to thank you all. Y'all been great. <laughs> Thanks, Russ. Bye. Bye-bye.